So good morning and welcome back to this NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. In the last few lectures uh, we have been discussing about uh, total synthesis of natural products having four membered ring. So now in the next few lectures we will focus on natural products having five membered five member rings. So when you talk about five member rings there are two classes of natural products which should come to your mind immediately. The one is uh, prostaglandins, the other one is triquinin based natural products. So first let us start with uh, prostaglandins. Uh, prostaglandins they were well known and during 1960s and then 70s got lot of attraction from synthetic chemists to develop new methodology for the synthesis of uh, all the prostaglandins. The prostaglandins as you can see has uh, a cyclopentane has a, has a cyclopentane with two side chains okay two side chains. So this is the core structure of prostaglandin which we can call it as prostonic acid okay that is the core structure. So most of these prostaglandins were discovered and reported in early 30s by von Euler and of course it was not easy to elucidate the structure of all these prostaglandins. It took about uh, the more than 35 years to elucidate the correct structure of prostaglandin. Okay? And once the correct structure of prostaglandins were identified then lot of action take, took place from synthetic chemists to synthesize this compound and I will at least talk about two total synthesis of prostaglandins one by E. J. Corey uh, Nobel laureate and other by Gilbert Stark. Okay. So if you look at this closely, so they are all carbocyclic oxygenated C2D molecules okay. and in addition they have two side chains. Okay. So one, one having carboxylic acid at the terminal, the other one is having methyl group. Okay. And how do you classify prostaglandins and how do you name it? Okay. It depends on the number of different functional groups present in the molecule. The basic structure is same cyclopentane with two side chains. Okay. When you want to classify it was based on two things. One the functionalities present in the 5 membered ring. Okay. What are the functional groups present and how they, they are present. Okay, what is what is their relationship and the second one depends on the number of unsaturation number of unsaturation present in the two side chains. Okay, let us directly go into the nomenclature. So normally when you talk about prostaglandins they write PG, PG as the first two letters. So the PG represents prostaglandin. PG means it is prostoglandin. Then you see PGA, PGB, PGC, PGE, PGF. What are these additional letter A, B, C, D, E? Okay. PGA, PGB, PGC. All of them have cyclopentenone. Okay. You can see this five-membered ring is in the form of cyclopentenone. Well, but the double bond position changes from A to B to C. When you go from A to B to C, you can see the position of the double bond also migrates. One is alpha beta unsaturated ketone, then beta gamma unsaturated ketone. The other one is also alpha beta unsaturated ketone, but there are no chiral centers. These two are no chiral centers. It is a tetra substituted come. Okay. So, first one is alpha beta unsaturated ketone but it is di substituted double bond is di substituted whereas the second one it is tri substituted and third one it is tetra substituted. So they are called PGA, PGB, PGC okay. all of them as you can see have one double bond 
but the position of the double bond gives their name. Then what is D and E? Here the double bond, the double bond is replaced, you do not have double bond, instead you have a hydroxyl group. Okay. And the hydroxyl group also it is beta hydroxy, beta hydroxy means it is like aldol, okay. beta hydroxy ketone. So, if the ketone is here and the hydroxyl is there then it is PGD and if it is opposite then this is called PGE. Okay. PGA, PGB, PGC have cyclopentenone, PGD and PGE have one hydroxyl and one ketone, we can call it as hydrox beta hydroxy ketone or aldol in the cyclopentane ring. Still the two side chain are intact. Okay? Now we will come to the last category that is PGF. What is PGF? Here the ketone which was present in PGD and PGE they are reduced or in other words you have two hydroxyl groups in the cyclopentane ring, they are called PGF. And you also see when you, when you read literature, you will see PGF alpha, PGF beta. What does it mean? That means the ketone which you reduced okay, here, if it is alpha, the stereochemistry is alpha, then you write PGF alpha. If it is beta, then you write PGF beta. Okay? So, that is how the names are given for prostaglandins. Then you also see PGF 1 alpha, PGF 2 alpha. What does it 1 and 2 mean? So, that means the side chain, you have two side chains, it depends on the number of double bonds present in the side chain. Okay? If they write 2 alpha that means the side chains have 2 double bonds. If they write 1 alpha that means it has only 1 side chain. Okay? So, this is about uh, the nomenclature of prostaglandin. So, now let us see what are the challenges these molecules provided for synthetic chemists to make this compound. And if you look at the PGF series, the PGF series have 5 chiral centers, okay. PGF have 5 chiral centers, 4 in the ring, 4 in the ring and 1 in the side chain. I will come to that later, but 4 in the ring, 1 in the chiral center and the 4 in the ring, they are contiguous, 4 contiguous chiral centers are present in prostaglandin. Then the hydroxyl group which is present in the side chain, it is little far away from the four chiral centers present in cyclopentane. So that means sometimes it will be difficult to use the four chiral centers present in the cyclopentane to direct the hydroxyl group or introduction of hydroxyl group at C50. Then when you look at the side chain, one side chain has cis double bond the other side chain has trans double bond. Okay. One side chain has cis double bond, other side chain has trans double bond. And the prostaglandins D and E have beta hydroxy ketone that is aldol. Okay. Once you have this aldol as you know, they are slightly unstable when you treat that with acid or base. Okay. So, one should be extremely careful when you reach that stage you should not use acid or base. Okay? And because you have beta hydroxy ketone and diol and triols, so the synthetic strategy should have proper protecting groups and also you should also have orthogonal protecting groups. Your two different protecting groups should be introduced and cleaved at different times. Okay? So, these are the synthetic challenges one could expect while talking about total synthesis of prostaglandins. So, as I said there are quite a few total synthesis, but the first total synthesis was reported from Professor Kore's laboratory. Still even today that synthesis is considered under one of the best synthesis of prostaglandins. 
their retrosynthesis is based on few key reactions. First of all is basic idea is he called it as bicycloheptane approach. That means he starts from this bicyclo 2 2 1 system, bicyclo 2 2 1 system having a CH2 X here. Okay. Now what he does, what he wants to do is you cleave this bond. Okay. When you cleave this bond that should get converted into a nicely cyclopentadiene, cyclopentane and these two side chain. Okay. You can see 1 and 2, 2 side chains can be easily introduced. Okay. So, this becomes one side chain and this becomes side chain 2. So, what is important is you have to cleave this bond. Okay. The cleaving that bond is very very important and how you cleave accordingly you can fix the stereo centers of these 3 contiguous carbons. That was his plan. Okay. The whole thing involved 3 key reactions, 1 Diels-Alder reaction, 2 bare Willinger oxidation and third one iodo lactronization. These are the 3 key reactions which he used to synthesize prostaglandins. Okay. Let us see his uh, retrosynthesis. So when you look at this molecule uh, here uh, for example we start with PGF 2 alpha. Okay. So 2 alpha that means uh, 2 double bonds are there is not it and alpha this hydroxyl is alpha okay, PGF. His first retrosynthesis is to disconnect the cis double bond. Okay. If you disconnect the cis double bond then what you should get is, so this is the Wittig reagent, the other portion, other portion this should be aldehyde, is not it? This should be aldehyde. That aldehyde, the hydroxyl group immediately will cyclize to form lactol. Okay. Or in other words, if you have this lactol, then one can do a Wittig reaction to get this compound. But before that you have to protect the hydroxyl group. Here the hydroxyl group is protected as THP ether that is tetrahydropyranyl ether. Okay. Now the lactol can be obtained, the lactol can be obtained by dibol reduction of this lactone and if you have this aldehyde, this double bond can be obtained from this aldehyde by Wadsworth Immons modification. Okay. So this is very easy and that also will give you trans double bond. A simple Wittig will give cis double bond and this Wadsworth Immons modification will give you the trans double bond. Okay. The next step is how to get this bicyclic aldehyde, bicyclic aldehyde. Okay. So the aldehyde of course can be used as protected form of the primary alcohol. Then this lactone, 5 membered lactone. So whenever you want to synthesize a 5 membered lactone, again one reaction which should come to your mind is iodo lactonization, iodo lactonization. That means if you have a double bond and if you have a carboxylic acid, if you treat with iodine or potassium iodide, in the presence of sodium bicarbonate, first iodonium ion will form here followed by attack of this carboxylate, it will open up the iodonium ion to give iodolactone. That iodine can be easily removed with tributyl tin hydride. Okay. So what you need is this double bond and then carboxylic acid. Depending on the ring size, you can have this either CH2 or CH2M. Okay. Normally 5 member and 6 member work very well. This how will you get it? Okay, if you look at here the advantage is, is very creative. This carboxylic acid and this hydroxyl group, this carboxylic acid and hydroxyl group, if you connect it, if you connect it, then that will give you this 7 membered lactone. 
what you have done this CH2 COH you are connecting with this one ok. Now how will you get this lactone? What are the reactions we know to get lactone? One of the simplest and straightforward reaction to get lactone is to get from carboxylic acid and alcohol. But that is what we want here ok. But this lactone one can get it from Bayer Williger oxidation. If you do a Bayer Williger oxidation of this ketone that will give you this 6 membered lactone ok. And this as soon as you look at this molecule you can see a cyclohexene ok. You can see a cyclohexene. So, cyclohexene again next very important reaction which should come to our mind is diehl solder reaction that in principle should give you the diene and the ketene equivalent. As you know ketene cannot be used in diehl solder reaction as dienophile because ketene undergoes dimerization they are unstable. So, normally people use ketene equivalents either nitro ethylene or alpha chloro acalone nitrile. So, this is called ketene equivalent ok. One can use ketene equivalent to get the corresponding ketone ok. Now, let us see the synthesis. So, for the synthesis first he started from cyclopentadiene ok, cyclopentadiene and when you treat to sodium hydride you know it can generate anion when right? cyclopentadiene and anion is aromatic is not it. So, you can easily generate anion. Now, quench with methoxymethyl chloride that is CH3 methoxymethyl chloride is CH3 O CH2 Cl. So, this is the leaving group ok. Then this will attack here and your chloride goes. Once the chloride goes what you get is CH2 O M E ok. This is what you need. Here there is one small problem. The problem is so this is this is cyclopentadiene ok. Once you have cyclopentadiene it can undergo various 1 5 hydrogen shift ok. So, if you are doing this reaction above 0 degrees above 0 degrees it can undergo 1 5 hydrogen shift to form these two dienes also ok. So, that means not only while making this compound one should do the reaction below 0 degree and remove the solvent also below 0, 0 degree. But also when you do the diehl sol reaction you should do below 0 degrees. So, those days as you know the diehl sol reactions were done at high temperature you know either in seal tube or reflexing in benzene or reflexing in toluene and so on. So, now if you have to use this diene this particular diene without isomerizing to other two dienes via 1 5 hydrogen shift the next step that is the diehl sol reaction should be done at 0 degrees or less. So, what he did he took this compound and then treated with alpha chloroacalonitrile in the presence of copper fluoroborate. The copper fluoroborate helps to do this reaction at very low temperature you can do it sub 0 and when you do that you get the corresponding bicyclo 2 to 1 adduct bicyclo 2 to 1 adduct. So, now you got this chloroacalonitrile adduct as you know this is a synthetic equivalent of ketene. So, next step is the hydrolysis of the acalonitrile adduct to get corresponding keto ok. So, as we have seen in the retrosynthesis we could successfully make this bicyclo 2 to 2 1 ketone ok. The next step is to carry out Bayer Williger oxidation. So, when you use MCPBA ok when you use MCPBA there are two possibilities one it can epoxidize the double bond two it can undergo Bayer Williger oxidation. So, between these two Bayer Williger oxidation takes place because if you look at this double bond the CH2OME 
is just above the double bond and that protects the double bond from attack by MCBB. Okay. So, that is how when you do the bare willigan oxidation of this ketone with one equivalent of MCBBA you get this bicyclic 3, 2, 1 lactone. Okay. Then obviously next step is open this up to get the corresponding hydroxy carboxylic acid. So, that is very easily done by alkaline sodium, sodium, sodium hydroxide. So, now you got the hydroxy carboxylic acid. The important feature of this reaction is these two C, C, C bond and CO bond they are cis to each other, they are cis to each other. So, same thing you can maintain. Whereas, if you look at the CH2OME, this is opposite to opposite to this CH2. So, that way you can see this is beta whereas, these two are alpha. So, the stereochemistry also is correctly fixed though it is racemic, but relatively if you see they are trans to each other. Okay. So, now you have the hydroxy carboxylic acid, the next step is the iodolactonization. So, the iodolactonization can be done by treating with potassium iodide and sodium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate remove the hydrogen of carboxylic acid, potassium iodide forms iodonium ion and the intramolecularly the carboxylate attacks and you get the corresponding iodolactone. So, as I said that iodine is not required because you need only the lactone and not the iodine. So, it can be easily removed by treating with tributyl tin hydride and AIBN. So, before that one should protect the hydroxyl group as acetate. So, you protect the hydroxyl group as acetate then treat with tributyl tin hydride you get the lactone. That lactone is called corase lactone. Okay. This is one of the very important lactone in the total synthesis of uh, prostaglandins. Okay. Other than many people made this lactone by different method and some people use this lactone and then made prostaglandins, but this corase lactone is well recognized in the total synthesis of prostaglandins. So, once you have this, now the next step is to elongate one of the side chains. Okay. Next step is to elongate one of the side chains. So, you have CH2OME. Okay. If you use BBR3, BBR3 is known to cleave OC bond. Okay. So, it will cleave the methoxy. Okay. You get the corresponding alcohol CH2OME because it is SN2 displacement, it is easy to cleave methyl. So, once you have the CH2OH, next step is to oxidize. So, you can oxidize the CH2OH using chromium trioxide pyridine complex. So, you get the corresponding aldehyde. Now, you can do the Wurzworth immons Wittig reaction to get the trans double bond. Okay. Now, the trans double bond is fixed. Okay. What is the next step? You have to reduce the ketone. Okay. You have to reduce the ketone in the presence of acetate and lactone. So, zinc borohydride successfully can reduce the ketone particularly alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, it initially initially you could reduce it to the corresponding allylic alcohol, but what he got was mixture later he developed uh, you know other reagents for example, CBS reagent, Kore Bakshi Sibata reagent to get exclusively only one isomer. Okay. Lot of chemistry was developed uh, using the prostaglandin total synthesis project. Then the acetate to be removed. Why acetate should be removed? The next step should be to attach the second side chain, is not it? So, second side chain means you have to reduce lactone to lactol, then do the VT. But the problem is if you reduce with the dibol, if you reduce with the dibol, not only the lactone will be reduced, but acetate also will be hydrolyzed. Okay, not only the lactone will be reduced, acetate also will be hydrolyzed. So, you have to hydrolyze the acetate to get the diol and reprotect that. Now, you protect the hydroxyl group, both hydroxyl groups as THP ether. Though THP ether is not a good protecting group for the simple reason that the THP will give additional chiral center. See, THP is nothing but, okay you can see it will create additional chiral center. Okay. 
but if you are using for one or two steps it's okay but for a longer sequence don't use thp okay so now after protecting this as thp next is to reduce the lactone to lactal okay so that was easy to get the lactal once you have the lactal the lactal is nothing but your aldehyde and oh isn't it lactal is nothing but aldehyde and the hydroxyl group then you can do the wetting okay the simple standard wetting when you do on this lactal you get the corresponding cis alkene so now you see we have already introduced the trans double bond now we have introduced successfully the cis double bond so what is left in the synthesis of pge2 alpha and pgf2 alpha two means two double bonds are already there okay E one has ketone, F both are hydroxyl group. If you remove the THP, if you remove the THP, then you get directly PGF2 alpha. So that was done with it acetic acid water. You take this compound, treat with acetic acid water at about uh, little bit higher ambient temperature, you get PGF2 alpha. Okay. Now you want one of the hydroxyl group to be oxidized, one of the hydroxyl group to be oxidized to ketone, but it will be very difficult to oxidize one of them. Okay. So how do you do? Before you remove the THP, not this one, this one to be oxidized. Before you remove the THP, oxidize the hydroxyl to ketone. Okay. Before you remove the THP, oxidize the hydroxyl group to ketone. Then in the second step, you remove both THP. So that will give you PGE2 alpha. Okay. So from the same intermediate that is corase lactone, one can easily make PGE2 alpha, PGF2 alpha. This is not a chiral one, this is a racemic one. And for the chiral one, what he has done is here. A chiral Diels-Alt reaction, yeah, asymmetric Diels-Alt reaction he has done, followed by um, even the reduction of ketone to alcohol, he has used CBS reduction to get only one isomer. I will discuss that how he has done asymmetric version of uh, prostaglandin in the next class and I also will talk about uh, uh, Gilbert Stark's total synthesis of uh, prostaglandins using a very interesting radical cyclization as the keystone. Okay? Thank you.